All right. Good morning, everyone. How is everyone? Doing good. I, I don't really do any cold jokes, right? It's not a part of the SOP, right? I can skip the whole cold joke thing, right? Yeah. Sure. Good. See. Uh, right. So, uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my name is Xiang. I'm from Design Podology. We are a digital agency helping companies to do business transformation in their uh, digital space. Pretty much, uh, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm honored to present my talk today at WorkCamp 2017. And uh, I'm a certified project manager. I'm a marketer expert. And uh, for those of you in HR Scrum, I'm a Scrum Master as well. So if you are interested in that, we can have a separate conversation on that. So, but uh, pretty much for today's purpose, uh, I've been doing WordPress project for the last seven years, going to eight years actually. So ever since the beginning where there was so much of competition out there with Joomla and Drupal, uh, we sort of mingled with everything and we sort of settled on to WordPress. And I believe most of you here, uh, if you started with WordPress, I think you're on the right track. If not, uh, I think you guys already made a decision a long time ago. All right, so let me start off with what is digital plumbing? And that's my topic today. So uh, just a quick show of hand. Uh, amongst us here, any marketers? Awesome. Any uh, developers? Wow, OK. Any plumbers? <laughs> I'm glad I didn't get anyone to come in for that particular purpose. So if you are here thinking about uh, what it means being the, the seven layers of uh, OSI model, uh, sorry, that's not it. Today, I'm focusing mainly on the marketing side of digital plumbing, whereby it's about interconnection of all the materials, that all the assets you have online, and how do you connect them together so that you actually have a, a complete picture of what's happening uh, from your audience to your business to all your uh, complementary system around it. So if, uh, in a nutshell, under the hood, between your web asset and third party system, and this will include, of course, your MarTech, your AdTech, your Google uh, advertisement, uh, so Google Analytics, your trackers like Pixel, uh, Facebook Pixel, and uh, your ads publisher and all, all your inbound and outbound partners as well. So uh, if nothing else out of today, talk at least I need to I, I want to introduce you also of these kind of vocabularies when it comes to modern uh, marketing, modern digital marketing. So when you have your WordPress site, it's not just a site for you. It actually does something for you in terms of marketing. So and the whole purpose, why do you do all these things? I think uh, a very famous quote that you probably heard about this one before is that uh, I do my marketing. I know how it works but I'm not sure which how of it work. I spent so much money, how of it actually went to waste, but most of the time you actually don't know what actually uh, worked the best for you. So uh, I know I spent, uh, uh, the trouble is I actually don't know which one is the one that I wasted. So to do all this uh, plumbing work is actually really to answer the, the main question of uh, what, what are the sales, where, where are they coming from, and where are my leads dropping off. And uh, it's to remove the feeling of helplessness. So you are not uh, seeing this as a black box, you have a site, you have a traffic coming in and out, you actually have a way to actually sieve out the, the data that helps you to decide what to do now, what to do later. And of course, if the traffic comes in, uh, comes in through you, how do you reharvest them back into your sales funnels? So, MarTech stack, I touched on this word just uh, a while ago. Pretty much, what is it and where do all fit in? Uh, I'm borrowing this particular slide. Oh, sorry. Uh, let me just maybe go through a, a, a history first. The good old days, whereby you have traffic coming to your WordPress site. And the only thing you need to do is to actually just find them, plaster all your ads everywhere, get them through a preset path. You come to my website, homepage, go to my product page, and then you buy or you convert uh, via talking to us. The good old days are pretty simple. No, you, you don't really have a lot of competition. You just you, you find a good ad search engine fight, and you get your audience coming in. They will go through this process. Great. But unfortunately, most of them actually don't really convert at the end of the day. You actually see a lot more these days. If 5% of them, uh, sorry, if 1% of them convert, typically you are not seeing the rest of 99% of the traffic. What are they telling you that you are not learning from it? So it comes back to what else can you do with the traffic that actually came but never do anything beyond uh, buying from, uh, beyond just looking through the pages. So some of them might be good enough to just bombard you. They might come back later. Uh, a lot of them, they probably left and they just forgot about you because you guys just, at this point, not ready for it. Uh, to us, it's very important because we actually spend a lot of money getting traffic. You buy ads, you go to Facebook, you go to Google, you plus the ads, you got them in. And what do you do? What can you do? Uh, how do you track? How do you retarget? And how do you nurture them? So looking at this slide, I think uh, the, the lines are a bit thin. Uh, I'm sorry because I should have tested it in the bigger screen. But it goes around your site being the standard traffic, 
and if they are going into any part of your your uh, going off the site, if they are say going back to their social media, uh, if they are going through your uh, email campaigns, you are going through your neutral campaigns, all these tracks are currently missing in the bulk of the, the website we see in, in the market. So I'm borrowing a, uh, a deck from Microsoft. So this is the Martech stack. Uh, they they got they had this up a, a couple of years back, and uh, this slide essentially visualizes your effort online. It's no longer a one-way street. It's no longer no longer even just a simple funnel. It's actually a loop. You have your pre-sales effort. You have your pre-sales effort with WordPress being one of the, the key platform for you to serve your content. And content being, of course, your product page, your about us. And beyond that, what else can you do to actually play the content game? And beyond that, after going through WordPress, if they actually end up in your email system, uh, do you have a system to actually capture that? Do you have a system to optimize the touch points that you can potentially build and to nurture the relationship along the way? And post-sale, you can actually put them into a CRM. And then after that, what do you do with the data? And uh, there are a lot of ecosystem players in here. Um, I'm showing this slide, and it's only the stack that Microsoft by themselves has. Beyond Microsoft, you have Marketo. Beyond Microsoft, you have Infusionsoft. And of course, the simple things like even just a simple contact form that you have with a database. That itself is sufficient for you to do a lot of things. So just a quick stats uh, just for you. First for information, I got this from uh, W3 Tech. As of today, this month, 35% of them actually, of the website in the world actually do not even have a tracker meaning that they put their site up, they just don't care. So for us, that is actually a pity. Uh, for those that actually have uh, a tracker, and of, of the total number, 54% uh, of them actually uses Google, Google Analytics. Great visualization tool for you to see your traffic. And a shout out to Jetpack, 4.6% of them actually are on Jetpack. Of, of, of course, the most are on WordPress. So these tools for us is the baseline. That's why we call it plumbing. Plumbing, you have it in your house, you don't care how everything connects up but you really need it. You, you trust your architect to actually have something like this. If you are a developer, if you, are all, if, if, you, if you have a business trusting you to build out their system, you need to have plumbing just to make sure that shit flows through, right? If not, they will notice the difference. So why go through all this trouble? The, the whole idea of plumbing is really not just about setting things up and just forget about it. It's really about uh, changing whoever that comes in from an unknown list, in our term being people that, activities that happens on your site that you don't know how to attribute to unknown leads. And there are a lot of tools for that. And of course, passing the activities that you have on site to a third party system or even between uh, pages that you want to do uh, a flow through of personalized content, passing the events through. But you, for at this moment, it's pretty much a one way street. You want to make it a two way street. And uh, of course, you want to do marketing or attribution, knowing what actually, actually helps at the end of the day. And uh, allow personalized marketing. So, very simply, bait them, honeypot them, and tag them. Right, so I'm going, I'm going to go through a simple funnel process, and I believe the marketers will be very familiar with this kind of term, tofu, pretty much at the top of the funnel. Uh, you have visitors at this stage that they know what they want. So what can you do? You know that they are interested. You have put up maybe some pages that talks about your problem area. You want to talk about your solutions. You put the pages up. You know some of them will come through via your Facebook page, uh, your post via your Instagram, via your Twitter and all those. And I'm sure by this point, and if you have not done so, I'm, I'm very sorry to hear that, is that you must have a UTM code. First step of plumbing is to have the, in, the inlet, to have the water coming in, and you know which particular pipe comes in. UTM code, first thing. And of course, when they go through your content, it actually knows how they walk through via a, Google, a simple Google funnel uh, view. Uh, but of course, when they consume the content, you actually have a third layer of content, uh, data here they can actually extract. If they come to the page, they bounce, simple, straightforward. If you come and stay, you actually don't know where they are uh, at the point of knowledge in terms of what are the things that you are writing, you are writing, which header do they actually reach before they turn off. So uh, in DP, we actually use what we, what we uh, look at as a view content, Facebook pixel uh, called that. You actually use it to track where they actually uh, reach until. So they scroll on the page, you can actually know. Do they actually reach maybe the pricing and then they log off? Something is wrong there. If they actually reach all the way to the end and they sort of don't know how to contact you, you need to uh, figure out what are the, the, the drop-off point. And we use this function to see of the traffic that comes in, where are they dropping off? How far deep are they reading? If the content is too long, if the content is too short, if the content is not doing their work. So content game is content is pretty much the, game, uh, the name of the game at this stage. So the next part, when they are a bit more uh, educated, at this point, we look at mainly uh, having them as a, as a custom audience, you know this group of people, they are already qualifying themselves as really, I'm, I'm interested, let me find out more. I'm here at the consideration stage. 
And construction stage means that I don't read about the problem, the, the problem set. I'm, I'm reading more on the solution set. What are you offering? Do you actually have something uh, in your competitors that you do not have? What are the differentiation? Uh, are you something along the line that I should consider and park it in my, in my bookmark? And at this stage, you really want to know uh, what is the custom audience that you're capturing here. Having a Facebook pixel, by default, if you install it, you will actually track that in your Facebook page and uh, not Facebook, you know, your business manager. So if you don't have it, marketers, I, I hope you guys have something along the line because Facebook these days is really, 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 really perfect for what you need to do when it comes to social media marketing. So, and of course, uh, once they come in here, you want to offer something for them to actually uh, take away. So at this stage is that I want to know more. I'm willing to give you a bit more to exchange, for instance, uh, really high value content that you create, like for instance, Evo. Uh, Design Apology, we actually, uh, we, we, uh, we have a niche in private healthcare. We do marketing for them. So last year we did, a, the, the, there's a publishing of uh, Singapore Medical Council uh, guidelines for advertisement and marketing. And we summarize that into a three pager and then we put it online for them to download. And we, just, we don't just include as a link. We actually have a, uh, what we call a squeeze page. You have a form, they fill it in. They really like it, they fill it in and they go, they go into our nurture stream. So thinking about some of the slides, we actually have a path for them to actually flow through if they are not ready to buy yet. They are just here to look at things. They want to learn more for their business interests. And we want to know that they are at that stage. Give us your email address. Let us walk you through the process. If you need a sales manager to talk to you, give us a contact number. At this point, it's really about nurturing them along the way. So if you do not build your uh, plumbing uh, properly this way, you might have people coming in where you actually do not know where they're coming from. For instance, if they come to uh, one of the, the pages, what we call the honeypot page, is that if they go through the pricing page and they sort of leave, or if you go to the pricing page and look for grant to sort of sense the, the price sensitivity of this particular lead. When they talk to you, you know how the next stage, what do you talk to them about? This is what we call a honeypot pitch. And a lot of times they actually go through the PIC uh, grant pitch. If you are in uh, marketing or if you are in web design development, you know actually most of them came through the whole idea of web marketing through PIC. They sort of figure out, hey, I can, I can get I'm going to pay for my website, right? Let me see who else offer this. And they actually end, land there. When you talk to them, it needs a different packaging. You need to package it to the way that they understand it. Not through, say, uh, self-educated guys, but through more on the push factor from the, from the grant side. So all these things are very valuable information. For the sales manager to talk to, for your marketing uh, funnels to start working, having all these things can help you personalize your message to them. So of course, great, now they actually ended up at your bottom of the funnel. At this stage, really, I'm very, very willing to buy. It's just really, help me help you, uh, let me help you to buy. So at this stage, they are yours to loss. So, at this stage, it's really giving them all the product information that they need just to cross that particular the last barrier, reduce all the friction to your sales. And uh, once they buy, actually that's where things get interesting because as soon as they buy, they actually have more information of the real exact custom audience that people will actually convert at the end of the day. When I use the word custom audience, I'm using it in the context of Facebook because Facebook, they know about the world on the social media side, whereby there's identity twine behind it, there's a demography behind it, there's a psychography behind it. If you have your Facebook pixel installed, all these things are captured automatically. If you go to a business manager, you can actually open up a custom audience based on who actually landed where on your website. You can filter down to, if you have a hundred audience, you can actually use that to uh, a great effect of actually finding out who else along that particular psychography that you should target. If you're an F FMCG, then that's great because your audience suddenly becomes bigger. So at this stage, it's really about keeping track. And when you have all these things, you have Facebook Pixel, you have analytics, you have all these scripts that has to run. Uh, in DP, we use Google Tag Manager. So Tag Manager is where all these scripts that you have uh, along, uh, that I mentioned just now, have it inside your system. And they help you to organize all this tag. There shouldn't be any conflict. But the great thing about Google Tag Manager that, that most didn't actually know about is that Google Tag Manager works, there's a layer on top of it called the data layer. And it handles structured data, it handles script, it handles uh, communication of information sessions and, and uh, parameters that can pass between the tools. How do you get your Facebook uh, system to talk to, uh, say, my marketer system? Because I want to know, are they active on Facebook? How do I pass in, for instance, my marketer, somebody actually signed up? I want to know which, before he signed up, did this guy go through a few stages? So this is where you can connect all these tools together and you use push event to push the data along. So I, I can actually, uh, there's a trick you can do is to actually install uh, Google, AdWords, uh, sorry, uh, analytics, as well as if you're using Marketo, you can actually link these two, pushing between the, them, the, the custom ID, and use a PII viewer to actually bring out the names and override it within your uh, analytics page itself. So, of course, analytics, everything is anonymized, <coughs> but you can actually use this to override and see actually this, say, John is here and look at which page to that level of intricacy. So, of course, at the end of the day, 
uh, it's all about being dynamic, being able to respond. It's a two-way street between you and the audience down now. When you know where they come from and you have the content ready for them. So this slide is a bit technical. Uh, if you are on GTN, uh, pretty much you are looking at a, a multi-layer stack here whereby you have your data layer. Uh, this one is actually from Google. Actually, there's, I'm, I'm not claiming anything for this one. And uh, you want to have uh, all this information being able to pass between them. Uh, I'm just going to quickly uh, glance through this one. But pretty much you are looking at mainly the data layer whereby things happens, the interesting things happens. So, of course, installing on WordPress, I believe the developers wouldn't have any issue. Uh, if you are like me, you like to do uh, hand coding, you do it in header.php. And that's what we do as well, because we want to have full control over how everything works together. But uh, of course, if you're marketers and you don't really want to touch the code, Duracell told me, fantastic too. Install it, baseline covered. So why we like Duracell Company is that uh, itself already start talking to, uh, it uses Google Tag Manager, it works on top of it. It actually has the basic information already uh, programmed in for them to pass between WordPress, having your custom data, like for instance, your post dates, your page date, your page author, and any particular custom data you have in there to push it straight to analytics. So when you look at your analytics field, you are looking at additional information customized to say filtered by author of your particular website. And that's a Facebook parameters that you can use to view inside analytics itself. So check them out. And uh, of course, once you have it, uh, I'm going to uh, walk you through some of the scenarios. But now, for, for instance, really just about linking things up together. So now that you have GA, it's about visualizing. And once that is in here, uh, how do you push data along? Uh, and of course, tracker IDs uh, and having uh, a way to cross-reference them to, to good analytics. So what else can you do? Actually, in GTM itself, you can do a lot more. So you have custom dimensions. I mentioned that. I think I, I, I was a bit early with, with that point is that you can actually pass custom dimension between each other. From GA, you can push things back. You can push things to GA as well. So personalized swap can be done pretty much on, on GTM layer itself. For instance, if you have a page that serves a ge general traffic, if GA tells you this guy actually is a guy, right? you can actually customize even dynamically the, the, the banner, the text in there using GTM to replace if this guy is a guy, if this traffic is a guy, show certain information that know that you know that you can convert them on GTM layer itself. Some coding required, but uh, it's possible. But we don't do that because we actually use Marketo. Marketo actually has its own way of doing personalized content. But if you are purely GA or GTM level, uh, you can talk to me later. It's a bit more technical. Uh, I can show you how things can work uh, on that layer. So uh, I think the slide is a bit too too bright to see, but actually in here, you just show the parameters that you push to GA for you to visualize within the dashboard. Imagine the, the whole dashboard where you have traffic, this goes down to the, to the level of your content type, your content author, and what are the, the stages, your MoFu, MoFu, Tofu content layer. So uh, quick scenario just to get, to relate things back to, to, to real sense. Uh, maybe scenario one would be pretty much, you have your traffic coming in. You have an ebook uh, landing page, which is what we did. And of course, they come in, they fill out the, uh, the form and they leave. So that's in B2B, you don't typically expect things to happen. You don't expect people to pay your money really online. Uh, that's for the consumer market. But at this stage, it's really, they, they already qualify themselves as they are the right audience. And it's, at that point, it's about following up with precision. So what we do is that we want to make sure we link up our email marketing tool with our, with our GTM text. And within here, we embed a form. We actually fill up, uh, we have a form for them to fill in. And immediately as they fill in, we associate the Google ID that has been tracking anonymous data we have a known data now that we know their email address and whatever things you ask from them, first name, last name, interest, company, company size, and demography, all these things, we associate them. So with these two things, uh, better than them coming cold from, from uh, Marketo, knowing just the email form, all coming anonymously just via Google Analytics, you can merge these two and make a decision later. You can visualize this within GA itself to know that, okay, who and who from which company actually view your content in GA itself. And you can pull the data out to figure out from your Marketo end, uh, I want everybody, before they download, after they download, what are the pages they went through, and I want to send the appropriate newsletter to them. And Marketo is one of the tools that uh, we use in DP to actually uh, to handle all this associated data. And we have the proper uh, channel to funnel through them uh, on the right content. And uh, of course, after you associate, there are, there are ways for you to do measurement protocol and all those for you to do the association and pushing things around. And uh, you want to tag them by interesting moment as well. Like for instance, they actually went through this whole thing, they actually uh, click any particular uh, buttons on your site. That's where you, you want to tag them. Like for instance, like I mentioned just now, there might be a, a page that is, is going to affect the, the messaging that you, that you prepare for them. So a scenario two will be probably a bit more familiar with uh, the, the part of audience here. 
uh, somebody come in, they actually go through your catalogs, they actually browse, and they sort of add something to cart and forgot about it. Uh, WooCommerce, uh, shout out, uh, they have fantastic abandoned cart email system. They actually help you to track and they actually automatically send out email going to the audience that actually came in, put in their email address and sort of log out. And just to remind them that you have something in your cart. We do things a bit differently because we want to have full control over once the email goes out, what are the interactions? Because we actually want to see the click-through rate, the open rate, as well as uh, what action they take afterwards. So we actually push all this data over uh, to, to Marketo, as well as to use Facebook Pixel to know that this person actually came through. And he also has a certain presence on Facebook as well. In Facebook, you can actually do a retargeting. So you might find it a bit creepy is that I sort of know that you went through my airline booking site and you sort of never buy. I can show you things that, like for instance, did you sort of, uh, uh, is your plan still still there? Do you want to come back here and, and find, or you want to push more, maybe just a, a simple promotion, introduce some urgency, get them back, and you have full control over the traffic, show them what you want them to show. So in here, if you're using Facebook Pixel, Pixel itself uh, carries along a few parameters as well. For instance, you can actually tag them uh, by events, going to add to cart before they buy. If you can track these two events, you can filter down, them down very easily. So with that, you can actually use uh, Facebook to do your, your remarketing, what we call it, remark uh, retargeting the, to, to them. And uh, maybe scenario three will be applicable for some of you. It's really when they come in here, they sort of uh, browse around and they actually buy. So that's fantastic, right? So a lot of stories end at that point is that they come in, they buy and thank you, bye-bye. Yeah, good, good that you buy and uh, we see you again. But that particular data itself, if you actually have it in your Facebook pixel, you check them properly, you know that they are a custom audience that already qualify themselves as the right demography or the right psychography that for you to market. And this is where if you look at the, the, the funnel, it actually opens up after the sales. If you look at the loop, it actually goes back into what we call customer advocacy or maybe not active advocacy, but you use them to open up your, your target audience. So if your audience they can actually help you to build up your audience within Facebook itself to do what we call a lookalike audience. So using that data you capture, you tell them as custom audience they actually bought something from you. If you have 100 custom audience, you can actually build a lookalike audience. Way. That's some parameters that Facebook use to just do comparison. If you have very little, like you only have two sales for now, I'm sorry, that doesn't work for you. 100, you can open up up to 500 lookalike audience. So that data helps you to sort of project ahead. How fast can you open up this particular channel funnel? So your first, uh, this order of business is really to get the first 100 buyers. Or if not buyers, at least the first 100 people that actually end up uh, looking at the pricing page. So from there, you remarket it. So yeah, yeah. so I, I touched upon this one, uh, really to discover your, 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 your qualified marketing uh, typography, uh, be a local audience, and see a way if you can add them into an email list for you to continue to nurture them. So that's really a lot about baiting them with content and with uh, freebies. And of course, this beats uh, having to buy a, a database from the market. You, really, you don't want to buy a database. You actually want to use database that is relevant to you. You want 500, not 5 million. You don't want to go through 5 million audience. So Facebook allows you to do that. It's really nothing special except just to install Pixel Pixel and use Business Manager to go through the, the process. But of course, it's plumbing. If you do not put the Pixel Pixel now, if you don't have it now, then all these things flow through and there's no caption point for you to actually retrieve the data later. So do it now, if you haven't. Right, so. Conclusion, so knowing is actually half the battle. Uh, I talk about a lot of the, the concept high level. Uh, I didn't get to touch upon the technical stuff because the spread is a bit uh, wide here. If you have any particular project that you are doing now that you just want to know, is it possible, is it not? If you just want to have maybe someone to talk to, uh, let me know. Uh, I will be happy to see whether I can chip in anyhow. Uh, of course, you want to have the 360 experience as well. After you know about them, what can you do to actually push content towards uh, the best experience you can get? And. Uh, I'm just going to end it here, and I think today is going to be a long day. I don't want to uh, take out too much of our time. Any questions that uh, is burning question that you want to ask now, or uh, maybe it's for the for the benefit of the audience? Yeah, personal blog that uh, talks about your services. And, uh, sure. Uh, <laughs> actually, we are uh, are from Design Podology, so DP.SG. We have a blog. We talk about all sorts of things, including content marketing, including uh, uh, Things like, for instance, even HR things, we, we are just a very, very open, complicated uh, company. Uh, so check it out. Thank you. Thank you. Um, for a typical project like that, yes. how do you resource it? Like, how many people do you put on a project? Because it seems quite massive. It's really not a lot. Uh, like I said, if at the beginning, if you have a WordPress site, you have, the, you have the platform for you to do all the things. It's really about inserting the right piping to make sure that information flows through to the third party site. 
So what we do in, in EDDP is that we actually set them up onto a, a subscription basis, mainly on just to make sure somebody can set up and can monitor and report back to you. So what we do is that we actually have a simple uh, one, one man, uh, so sorry, three man months per three man per month sort of a resource for our, uh, for our uh, uh, customer to sign on to pretty much. This person will be spending uh, eight times three a month hours with you. And within this, this hours is really about constructing. And of course, at the end of the day, if you do not have the right tools for you to say, for instance, you don't have Marketo, you probably cannot open that up. But basic minimum is Google Analytics and Facebook Pixel. These two, as a business manager or as a business owner, you can actually DIY yourself. You just need whoever that set up your uh, WordPress site to actually link up all these things. So we, for us, we don't charge extra for that. Really, it's just about installing plugins, installing some script. But the data, turning the data is where the three-man months is, is coming in. Yeah. Uh, the basic events straightforward, even to the level of conversion, also straightforward. You can just install the, the right plugin in the right place. If you say you want to do a lot more things like personalization, that what we do with ebook and tracking ebook into a nurture stream, that's there's a lot of work outside where you need to construct all these things and you need to know uh, strategize what content goes in the first email, when do you send out the first email, when the second email comes out, and if they take any actions in between, how do you uh, uh, how do you graduate them to the next fields for you to do the next part? And that part is all together a. Uh, 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 nurturing campaign that we can set up for you, but that's uh, our service. But actually, if that's something that you are not interested in, you just look at Facebook man Business Manager, you really, really should be doing Facebook Business Manager. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, we, we don't call it artificial intelligence, we just call it fuzzy logic. So I mean, you, you should know some logics that how your business, uh, how the activities should flow through. So it's about constructing the logic that is uh, dynamic enough for you to capture the biggest uh, percentage of your traffic flow through that you know exactly where they should go to. So the fuzzy logic helps you to open up that particular funnel. If you see AI, uh, for us, like if you, if you see how the way we do it, we don't like obfuscation, we don't like to hide behind plugins and all those, but if you know the exact code, you know how the traffic flows through, you have full control over that. It's just that what you do with the data. I think that's all is at the end of the day, uh, what matters to your business and what do you want to talk to them at each stage, each touch point along the way. <coughs> yeah. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Jin Yang.